Ladies and gentlemen, Don't Stop by New York's Adam Gonzalez. TV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. I am your host, Gilberto Gonzalez. Today's conversation will be with Maralyn Rodriguez, host of Ahora Si on La Mega. Welcome to CCP TV. <laughs> Thank you. Gracias. Thank you for inviting me here. It no, it's is good a to have you. Really a uh, pleasure for me to be here and an honor. Oh. Thank you. So let's let's start. Let's start with how how where did you come from? How did you come to Philadelphia? You know, what was your whole your whole story here? Sure. I was born in Caguas, Puerto Rico, uh, La Isla del Encanto, and I came to Philadelphia at the age of fourteen. And uh, you came to what part of the city? I was living in um, around Masher, second of Masher, North Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And how was that? How was that experience? Uh, that well, transition? I tell you, it wasn't easy because I came from a Spanish speaker, uh, Spanish speaking place or the island uh, from when it's hot, mucho calor, to here, to a cold place, a place where we get winter, we get snow. Uh, that experience was also uh, wonderful, <laughs> but different. So mm -hmm. I had to learn the language, of course, uh, and I was a teenager. So I was going through a lot of changes. It wasn't easy uh, mm -hmm. first, but eventually, you know, the, thank God I was a teenager. I was able to adjust and adapt and, and learn 
this new culture here mm -hmm. in Philadelphia. And what schools did you go to? I went to Thomas, uh, to Edison, the new Edison in uh, Lucerne. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I went to Harcum College and uh, finally in uh, LaSalle University. Mm, okay. So um, part of your experience here in Philadelphia uh, has led you to, to one of your careers, uh, which you work for the um, Office of Public Safety? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me, tell, tell me how did that come about? Because I know you also did social work before that. So tell me yes. a little bit about that first. About social working, work. Uh, social work. Well, I was in I was in college, and like any other uh, college students, uh, we have books, we have stuff that we need to pay for. So, I came across to this organization, uh, the National School Community Corp, and I enrolled to that. And um, thanks to that enrollment and that experience, uh, I was able to pay for for some of my college with the educational work that they were offering at the time and you know and and also an opportunity in the workforce uh, to work with the community to implement programs in schools with the students and the parents and um, that's how I started working in the community here in Philadelphia. What were some of the experiences in the uh, NSCC? NSCC. Mm -hmm. um, well, it was a group of, of young people uh, with different dreams, uh, to f with different careers. Uh, some wanted to become lawyers, other social workers, others uh, a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. And we 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 gathered as a group. We we became like a family, and we have. Uh, we had to do s different things, and we had to go into schools and implement programs. And I was uh, I was assigned to a school in uh, Ninth and Lily, I remember, Bernie em Elementary School. And there, I had to implement uh, three programs: it was the GED program for the parents, and uh, the after-school activity for the children. We even did a play, mm -hmm. and it was a really great experience working with the children. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, uh, f that's only uh, we only had to do it uh, to serve in a term. So after that term was done, that we was had one to one years, two years. Yes, the maximum you could do w at the time with uh, National School Community Corps was uh, two years. So after that, you know that uh, we had to, of course, we we continue in college and and hoping for for a good job. Mm -hmm. And so I end up in a, in a shelter, family shelter, working as a counselor. And uh, from there, uh, you want to know how I end up in a... Well, <laughs> no. Tell me about the f working at the family shelter. How was that? It was nice. It was really great because I already had that uh, experience working with parents and students. So there, I had uh, families. Mm -hmm. And I was very young, working in a in a sheltered environment. Um, and there, I what I did was, with uh, thanks to the experience that I got from the National School Community Corps, um, I implemented uh, after school programs in the shelter as well. So it was a really really good experience uh, mm -hmm. working in a shelter. Mm -hmm. So now you you you've done this you community service, that's like a passion, mm -hmm. and then from doing all this community service work, you went into um, the Office of Public Safety. In the, and tell me a little bit about that. How did that come about? Well, you know, working in a shelter was a great experience, uh, but, you know, we always want to better ourselves. Um, and at the time, the, the shelter, um, even though it was a great environment, unfortunately, um, there was, like, no retirement plans. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was something I was a little bit concerned and so a friend of mine another colleague told me hey they're looking for bilingual because um, you know we are increasing here in Philadelphia the number of Latinos are increasing so they were in need of Spanish speaker uh, interpreters and Spanish speakers in the police department so I apply and everything was happened so fast and then 16 years later 
I'm still working. You're still working. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so like, that's just been a, a wonderful career. I know you can't talk too much about the kind of work that you do, but... That's correct. But uh, how has that experience been for you? But it's also, uh, I can't complain. Um, it's also gave me more uh, the, the training that you get from the department. Uh, it's really great. Mm -hmm. uh, not only on a personal level, but, you know, being able to help people in the community uh, because I'm a, a certified interpreter as well. So I interpret for all the Spanish speaker uh, community, but not all, but, uh, you know, as wow. an interpreter for the community. Wow, wow. And so like then part of your passion, which is social work, led you into your other hat that you wear, mm -hmm. which is radio. Yes. Um, so tell me a little bit about, because I mean, that's, that's, that's how I met you and that's that amazing show that you have. So tell me a little bit how that came about. What was your first introduction into radio? Well, a um, couple of years back, um, I was promoting a health product and I was talking about health and I always liked that. I always like talking about health and, and I think that's always been within me. And um, we went to visit a, a show and there we talk about health. Like, I think it was like two times a week we'll win and talk about health. Also, it was a regular, show. a regular, you were a regular person coming to the show? Not yes, as a guest. We a were guest. guests talking about health. We have about, we had about 15 minutes to talk and there I kind of say, you know what, I, I can do, this. I think I could do this, I like it, mm -hmm. you know? But I remember I also had that experience within the department, so that also gave me, um, you know, the, the, the strength, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, el valor mm -hmm. para estar ahí. Wow, so, and then, so that was your first introduction to radio. Then, what was the second time that you were got into the to, to the radio that just kind of uh, the second time was on a show um, during the uh, midday and I remember I used to go there on a, a daily basis to talk about health and it thank thanks to my friend uh, and colleague uh, Franklin they gave me the opportunity to be on his show and and it's called Actualidad Informativa mm -hmm. through 1680. And so I began to get like, like my little own fan <laughs> club or mm -hmm. people that were calling that were really interesting and the topics that we were covering. And what were some of the, the health issues you covered? Uh, cancer. And tell me a little bit about that experience. Uh, we do a little different things with the uh, uh, or different organizations. Um, cancer is, you know, it's increasing. Uh, the number of people dying of cancer are still high. And, and what I want to do is uh, put a little bit of, you know, put some of my experiences so I could inform uh, our community, especially the Latino community, that we need to uh, make sure we go to our uh, yearly uh, checkups uh, make sure we do the exams uh, for our breasts. Not so much here, because I remember uh, when, when I first came across the breast cancer, and I was telling my mom, mama, I tell my mom, my mom, mom, this is how you do your breast exam. This, I'm going back, as mm -hmm. I, I was a teenager. She said, you touching your breast? <laughs> I say, yeah, they say you're supposed to touch it. So, you know, so these are things that are, we need to break in, uh, in our Latina, in within our Latinas, even though it's more open now, but before it wasn't so much open for us to touch our breasts and examine, so. Wow. Um, well, so the other, I know some of the other cultural aspects is that um, the woman in the house takes care of everyone first, mm -hmm. then it's her. Then it's us, yes. Yeah. So, uh, I'm hoping uh, that, uh, and, and I want my information to, to be of help for other people and, and, and that hopefully the numbers of people uh, being uh, 
with cancer will low go lower because if we go um, if we do it ahead of time before the cancer uh, is how you say that it starts to spread or uh, before it keeps spreading uh, we could stop it at an early stage mm -hmm. and and that's really important that we need to you know we so do our checkups. in Spanish you tell people that this is time to check up is now yes not tomorrow it's okay to touch a breast yes to and okay. when and what are they check what are the how do they, what are they, well what? of course in radio it's difficult to yeah. explain <laughs> these things but um there is an organization that uh -huh. which i'm volunteer to which is uh susan g coleman and yearly uh they invite latinas to this big event where they get uh educated and another thing is like I bring educators into my show. I bring professionals. Uh, they're going to talk about the topics. They they know what they're talking about. So. Um, uh, mm -hmm. And what are, what are some of the other topics? The the other it, it's AIDS. Yes, the AIDS. A, um, the HIV. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's something that's like a stigma. We don't uh, people really don't want to talk about it, but uh, it's out there, and mm -hmm. we need to inform. Uh, not only the adults but the, the the young generation that they need to uh, protect themselves uh, mm -hmm. when they're making adult choices um, and so we have so in my show I donate to the uh, uh, consortium of H uh, AIDS here in Philadelphia I donate time um, so that people can listen and say you know the message come uh, to the airwaves and and people can go and ch you know if they have a question or if they think they were in contact with someone that might be infected, go and get uh, mm -hmm. help. Well, so tell me, so tell me, for example, during your whole tr journey in radio, mm -hmm. um, tell me, was there a particular moment where there was a battle where you were like, I'm going to give this up, or was everything always beautiful? Uh, of course. Uh, Everything costs time, uh, money, uh, a lot of uh, nights that you don't sleep <laughs> because you want to bring, so you want to make a change, but you want to make a positive change. And with that, you need to take a lot of your time. Of course, I have a full time, uh, as you know, I have a full time job. So this I gotta do in my spare time and, and the time that I don't even have to put this thing together and, and, and I, I thank, first I thank uh, God for um, giving me the strength to continue. This will be my second year mm -hmm. and uh, our numbers of people that listen, not only here in Philadelphia, but worldwide because we have uh, the show retransmit in other two stations, one yeah. in the UK, uh, mm -hmm. London, and also in Texas, in Dallas, Texas, and they're able to listen through it worldwide. Mm -hmm. So now again, is it, was there any moment where you wanted to give it up or was everything always, your journey was always beautiful, there was never I, any kind of... It's been tough. I never wanted to give it up. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's just, it's been tough because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, first I got to get up at four in the morning and travel from one point of the city to, uh, to the other point. But when I'm there, it's just like, okay, I'm here, it's great. And, and, and when people see you, when I go on, uh, and do because I also donate time as an MC for all these uh, nonprofit organizations where they see you and they tell you, you're, you're Marilyn, mm -hmm. you know, and thanks for the program. You talk about the cancer or you talk about um, depression. Uh, and, and I think it was a great program. It gives me a satisfaction to say, okay, I'm doing a good job. I'm helping, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so cool. it's great. So then um, as part of what you do with with uh, with hosting and stuff? You also and you donate a lot of time to health issues, but there are also some other um, aspects of that you do too. Which is uh, there are two two events that mm -hmm. you do. Yes. Um, tell us, tell me a little bit about those two events. Oh, those are my favorites. Um, the first year, of course, there was no money, <laughs> mm. so I have to 
put a lot of my money to 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 do this event but when you see these kids you you say oh my god i have to do it so i keep doing it and and i like it one is the um the thanksgiving um is 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 we actually have a restaurant at, at third and sister be more uh lechonera principe that was the first uh restaurant that sponsored me to do this event and we give out dinners a complete warm dinner for thanksgiving for the whole family and the first year we had someone that was part of a project and we had the food delivered to the person and they have no family here in Philadelphia. So they were handicapped? They were handicapped and we delivered the food. Was it more uh, than one person or just uh, one particular person? Oh no, we give out dinners to whole families, but that particular person called and said, uh, you know, I don't have a family um, here and I don't have family at all. Wow. So we, of course, we we had to. Wow. Uh, you know, it, that was a great. We also had an 80 year old lady uh, they call for from North Philadelphia, mm. and we also deliver food deliver for food her. to her too. So, yes. how many people do you think uh, were served at on it's on Thanksgiving? The first year we serve a uh, total of seventy people. Mm -hmm. um, so we hoping to duplicate each year, help mm -hmm. uh, more people, uh, and and do it in a bigger place too, mm -hmm. so people can come. Because you know, as Latinos, we also are very like close. We like to sit uh, and and be with the family, but mm -hmm. we also losing that. So I kind of want to bring the family back together on table, nice. and and so that's one of the events. Mm -hmm. The other event is uh, breakfast with Santa, and I have a thanks to a police officer that dresses a uh, Santa Claus, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he, Santa comes and give out toys to have. Uh, friends, I bother everybody during before Christmas, <laughs> so I might bother you too. Okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully the audience mm -hmm. can uh, can also help out with this great event. W what we do is we go, we we give out breakfast, we entertain the kids, we do things as a family, not just give out a gift and here go home. We right. keep on there and entertain them for for that day and. For those unfortunately families, they can buy the gift for the kids. How many how many families and is there um, one particular family that that you could tell me about that that uh, was grateful that that enjoyed the event? Did you get any feedback from that? Um, I would tell you this. I forgot to tell you for the Thanksgiving. I had a, day, a, la a lady that was on drugs mm. uh, for about five years, and she you know, went to a program, re came back to society and uh, got her kids back. And because of my event, that was the first year from like five years that she actually sat down with her family to eat as a family again. And to hear that story, that I could make that happen, that was very special to me. Um, that, and, and the lady was very, she really touched me because somebody that was on drugs and she lost everything and now she got her kids back together and being able to sit with her family again and we able to provide that food, I, I, that made me feel really, really great. Mm -hmm. That was one story. And for the other kids, I had a, a guy that called and had four kids. Uh, the mother had passed away recently and he didn't have uh, he didn't want to celebrate Christmas, but he heard the, sh the show on the on the radio and call, and and he was there with his kids and and the kids. I was able to make them smile at least for you know losing my mother is not easy. Right. I lost my father uh, mm -hmm. in 2008, and it was very difficult uh, when you lose uh, one of your parents. So I know it wasn't easy for those kids, mm -hmm. but at least for a couple hours. For that time, they were smiling. Mm, yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful event. Um, so, where where is the show today? Aura, si. Like, what uh, is what's happening? What is what is the future? 
Oh, we have a great group of uh, professionals. We have a social worker, we have a psychologist that comes to the show, Jahaira Dominici, I have to mention her because she helps me a whole lot. I, I think uh, it, it, when you have a group of professionals and you have people who are good in your show, also it makes it even better. Mm -hmm. and, and what I want to do, hopefully in the future, is have TV and radio one uh, that people can see what's going on and, and our people that visit us uh, in our show and keep helping more people uh, on a daily basis. And so like now your, sh your show is connected to other states and countries? Tell yes. Tell a little bit about that. How did that happen? Um, you know, social media uh, is great. Thank God for social media. <laughs> Um, people have started to contact me because what I did was I, uh, every time I'm going to have a show, I do a preview with a video. And that caught interest in people. When you, um, when you say you're going to have a show, they listen, okay. But when they actually see pictures and photos, and, and they get interest in it. So um, ev every Monday I threw what's going to happen next Saturday. So they came across. Uh, in London, and they was like, well, you know, I like your show. Will you be interested in a uh, joint, uh, do like an enlace? Mm -hmm. So people can listen to your show. I say, oh, that's great. That's magnificent. Very nice. You know, the people in London, uh, Latinos in London, are listening to us every Saturday, as well as other states uh, in, in Texas. Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> That's all the time we have today. I would like to thank my guest, Marilyn Rodriguez, which you can listen to at 6 a.m. every Saturday at 1310 on La Mega. Um, thank you for joining me. I would like to thank you for tuning in. You have been watching Entre Nosotros on CCP TV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. I'm your host, Gilberto Gonzalez. See you next time.